Hey guys, we have new forms, so I wanted to go over those with you. We've got the old form, the new form, and then the Google Sheets, which I should have uploaded this afternoon, this evening, tomorrow morning at the latest. So the old form, y'all have seen this uh, money tracker form in all of my videos up to this point, so I'm not going to go over how it's used. You've seen it in the previous videos. I do want to point out the differences in the new form. And again, it doesn't matter if you're getting paid weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, you still use the same forms. So with the new form, what's different, you'll notice up at the top, it's there's a box for break-even, income, and pay primary. So the break-even, if you get a regular paycheck, you don't need to fill out the break-even. The break-even is for people like myself who don't get um, a regular paycheck. And so that's just a quick glance to say, okay, if we're going to make our bills this week, this is what we need to meet our obligation. If you get a regular paycheck, you don't need to fill out that box. This particular client, she does get a regular paycheck. She's paid bi-weekly. So she puts her income for this pay period into that middle box that says income. And then that last box there, that formula to find out how much she pays onto her primary card is income minus A, which is your bills and expenses for this pay period, equals the amount that she's going to pay onto her primary card for this pay period. So everything else, the bills and expenses, the primary card expenses, that works the same way as all the other videos I've done. Okay, exactly the same. The only thing that's different now is the ledger part at the bottom. I move the ledger over instead of it taking the entire bottom part of the worksheet. It's now directly under, um, aligned directly underneath your primary card. That's where you go in and you put in how much you spent on groceries that day, how much you put in gas. I do this like every day or every other day because if I don't, I will always overspend. So the ledger is there to keep you on track. And then that credit card section is just a visual for you so that you can see that you've used, you know, she's using credit card four and credit card five for this pay period. Credit card three is her primary card. So that, that leaves her with, you know, just two more cards on her next pay period. Now I do want to point out that under bills and expenses, I have the date there of credit card four is due on the 27th and credit card five is due on the 31st. If you saw the video I did for her with the, with the case study for the month at a glance, uh, she, you know that she already paid for October. But the point is that date for the 27th and the 31st for those credit cards, we are not paying attention to that date anymore. Obviously, she doesn't want to be late, but it is as soon as she gets paid. She wants to pay that credit card four and credit card five as soon as she gets paid. Not We're not waiting until the due date on the credit card. Nope, we're paying as soon as we've got our paycheck in our hot little hands. We are paying those credit cards because, again, the whole point is we want to make the payment, bring that balance down, let that balance sit there at that lower number for as long as possible before we match those bills and expenses to that credit card because we get paid or paid. We get charged. I did it again. <laughs> we get charged uh, our interest based off our average daily balance. So the sooner we can make a payment on that credit card and let it sit at that lower balance, the better. So even though those are when the credit cards are due, we're not paying that. We are paying it as soon as she gets paid. And, uh, and that's all I have for this moment. Oh, I also wanted to say, okay, so the continuing with the math, her balance on her primary card is $3,913.98. So what's going to happen is over the next two weeks, she's going to be buying her groceries and her gas, and she has a budget for her primary card of $500. So for the next two weeks, $500 is her max that she's going to be spending groceries, gas, and miscellaneous, putting it on that card. So that's going to increase her balance on her primary card to $4,413.98.
she is going to make a payment on that primary card of $769.56, which is going to bring her balance down to $3,644.42. Now, what she can do in a couple of weeks, once the credit card company sees that she has a pattern and practice of behavior of putting, you know, spending on the card, putting purchases on the card, and then making payments, they're not going to think twice about a $769 payment. However, because she's just now starting out, I have advised her, do not put that entire $769 onto that credit card as a payment right off the bat just yet. You want them to see you buying your groceries and your gas and then put half of it next weekend. Make a payment for half of it and then buy your groceries and gas for the second week and then put the next payment, the second half of that $769 on there. Because if you have been just letting that card sit there and all you've been doing is making the minimum payments on it, y'all, and then all of a sudden you put a big old $700 chunk on there, it makes the credit card companies very nervous and they will lower your credit limit. So you don't want to do that. So just starting out, she's going to go ahead and start putting her groceries and gas on there, on that primary card. And then after the first week, she will pay half of that $769. And then continuing the next week, groceries and gas, miscellaneous, and then half of that $769. But once we have that pattern and practice established, then yeah, as soon as she gets her paycheck, she'll fill this out, her money tracker. She'll be like, okay, well, this is what I've got for my bills and expenses. I've got $769 to put on my primary card. Boom. She'll put it on her primary card right then. And the reason for that is because we want that lower balance for as long as possible so that her interest rate is lower on her next statement. Okay, so that's all I have for you for now. Bye.